Apple had their WWDC 2024 event where they talked about all the changes coming across their operating systems, but they also refused to say the word artificial intelligence. Hi, welcome to Ziga Your Review. WWDC 2024 is bringing a lot of changes across all of Apple's operating systems. And they also talked about AI, even though they refuse to actually say the word artificial intelligence. First, I'm going to start with all the changes on their operating systems. Then I'm going to get into the AI portion of the presentation. I will be including chapters so you can jump to what you want to watch. Vision OS. Vision OS is the operating system that goes into Apple's VR goggles, despite them refusing to call it VR. Huh. It's kind of like them refusing to say AI. Vision OS is going to have an update. The update is going to have features that are supposed to make you want to buy their overpriced VR goggles. In my opinion, these updates really amount to not enough to even make it a portion of the keynote or make it something that you will necessarily want to spend money on. Some of the quote unquote features that they're adding is the fact that you can make your VR screen or monitor bigger. You can also make it widescreen. So you have that coming for you. Oh, actually, the biggest, biggest update is that it's coming to more countries. So this way, Apple will be able to sell this device in more places. iOS. iOS is getting a lot of new features that no one, no one's ever had before. <coughs> Android has had it for years, but that's besides the point. They're adding a way for you to customize the color and look of your widgets and app icons. What you can do is you can let your phone pick colors depending on the wallpaper that you're using in order to make use those colors for your widgets or icons. Or you can choose your own colors and customize it the best way that you want. This will actually finally give you the freedom of customizing your home screen the way you want it to look. So get excited for your customization possibilities. Another big change is you will be able to lock parts of your phone. So if you lend your phone to someone to look at something or to use it, they won't be able to go into areas of your phone that you want to keep them out of. Now, if somebody tries to actually go into those areas of your phone, they will be prompted to use Apple ID to identify themselves, giving you more privacy when somebody else uses your phone. The other addition to iOS is the capabilities of hiding apps. So you'll be able to create a hidden app folder where you will be able to put the apps that you don't want people to know that you have, <clears throat> porn or dating apps that you don't want people to know that you have. And um, that way, you know, if somebody grabs your phone and tries to go through it, they won't know that you are doing something you're not supposed to do. So thank you, Apple, I guess. Messages is getting more tap backs. That's right. Somehow, I guess you were limited to the amount of emojis that you could use to do, to do your tap backs. Now, Apple is being gracious enough to allow you to use a huge amount of emojis to do your tap backs. But it's not only that, you'll be able to enhance your text messages by either making them bigger or being making the little emojis move, so animated emojis, in order to give you a more playful way of messaging people. I think it's really cool. And again, as an Android user, I would like to welcome you Apple user to something that we've been able to do now for years. And yes, before you ask yourself if I'm going to be saying that, I'm going to be saying that a lot because I'm sick and tired of Apple pretending that they're the ones who invented a feature that's been around for years. Email is also getting a facelift. They said you're going to be able to categorize your emails on your phone based on the type of emails that they are. So if you have emails for work, you'll be able to group them work. If you have emails from, um, let's say, a store, you'll be able to do that. So 
There, more capabilities of doing that on email. The Photos app for iOS will also get a redesign. They are making it more like Google Photos. And I'm sorry, but that's exactly what they are doing. They're going to add a search feature where you'll be able to look for your pictures based on what they contain. So here's something where we will see AI being included, but they are not going to talk about AI until way later. The other thing that they're going to include is something that we call albums on Android world, but it's going to be called collections on the iOS world. And what that means is that the Apple photos app is going to group similar pictures in different albums. So you'll be able to find pictures in albums, depending on what they are like dogs, people, parties, things like that. Again, that's also something that AI is involved in and you'll be able to also customize the order of that or remove photos from it or add, add photos to it if you want to do something like that. Now, I'm not going to continue trashing Apple because the iPods Pro are getting an update and this update is actually really cool and something I wish my Pixel earbuds will do. But now you will be able to either answer calls or dismiss calls by just moving your head. So if you're getting a phone call, for example, and you're in a crowded place, is the example that they provided. If you don't want to answer the call, you can shake your head no and it will dismiss a call. If you want to answer the call, you can shake your head yes and it will answer the call. And that is a really cool feature. Apple TV will get X-ray. X-ray? I mean, insights. Uh, X-ray is Amazon's uh, feature that's been around for I don't know how many years. But Apple TV is getting it and it's going to be called insights. What this does is if you press on your remote, whatever's going on on screen, it will tell you what actors they are. It will give you their little bio and what other things they have done. It will also do it for music. So pretty cool that that's available. But if you are an Amazon Prime user, you've probably used this before. Going to give Apple their flowers when they deserve it. And this feature deserves it. Apple is going to make uh, subtitles more intuitive. So if you mute a program, Apple will immediately show you the subtitles of the program that you're watching. If you rewind, like if you skip back to replace something, Apple, is, Apple TV is going to assume that you didn't understand what the person said. So it's going to play that scene back with the subtitles on so this i will say apple is really really cool now apple wants to give you a more cinematic theater like experience when you're using apple tv so if you use a projector that supports 21 by 9 aspect ratio apple tv will give you that aspect ratio in order to again give you that theater like experience so good on apple for making those changes on their apple tv watch os watch os is getting some improvements what they're going to be adding is going to be training load so the way this is going to work is it's going to take your effort rating and it's going to mix it with the workout that you did to provide you your training load it clearly it's making the apple watch more of a training centric type of device even more than it already is i'm going to say of course apple watch it's a pretty good watch when it comes to tracking exercises and a lot of other things that other watches don't do. And it seems to just be getting better. Another thing that they're adding is an ability to customize your goals. If you have been injured or you're going to be on vacation or anything like that, you'll be able to put a pause on your, let's say, step goals so you don't lose your streak. And that is actually a welcome feature because Worst thing is when you've been working out for a while or like hitting your steps for a while and all of a sudden, you know, life happens and you cannot get to it. It is nice that Apple is giving you that ability to put a pause on it so you can continue your streak once whatever is going on goes away. A new app is coming to the Watch OS and that is going to be Vitals. This is going to track your health information. So if you have an Apple Watch, you know that it keeps track of your heart rate and your sleep and all these things. What it's going to do is going to take that information. It's going to put it in a new Vitals app. And if there's changes that are drastic within those, within that data, 
it is going to prompt you and let you know that there are some changes happening that you might not be aware of. iPadOS is getting an update. They're supposed to, they're making it more uh, useful uh, for people to, to want to buy an iPad. And one of the things they're doing is they're adding a navigation bar or what they're calling the tab bar. And technically what it does is a quick access menu that is going to live on the top of your iPad that you can customize depending on the things that you want to have a quick access to. Now, something that you need to get excited for is the calculator app coming to the iPad. When I was watching it, I was like, wow, really? This is exciting news, the cal calculator app. But it actually is. The reason is because it's not only a scientific calculator that, of course, kids can use when they're doing homework and things like that, but AI is going to be married to that app where you can actually have it solve problems for you by adding information to it and it's going to give you graphics and necessary information that you might need when doing things like that. That is going to be called math notes. And again, it's going to go beyond just being a calculator, which is really cool if you are a kid who is working on math at the same time, it kind of feels like you can dumb people down and give you answers for things and not necessarily allow you to learn these things, which is, you know, some of the drawbacks with AI. Now, they didn't specifically say that AI is part of this, but just looking at the demo, clearly AI is a part of it. Macs and iPads are going to be more gaming center because we have Ubisoft that is going to be bringing Assassin's Creed Shadows, which is the new Assassin's Creed coming out in November, is going to be playable on Mac and is going to be playable on iPad. That is pretty cool. And we also have Prince of Persia The Lost Crown coming to Mac. Mac, Apple has been making huge strides to get into the gaming market and it seems that they're getting there. Now let's talk about artificial intelligence. This is the part of the presentation that we start talking about artificial intelligence. But in Apple's fashion, they are of course not calling it artificial intelligence because for some reason, Apple has all these things that they refuse to say. And of course, because Apple likes to rebrand things and rename things and try to bend them to their will. They are calling artificial intelligence <laughs> Apple intelligence, which at the end of the day is still AI because the initials are AI, but it won't be artificial intelligence. It's going to be Apple intelligence, even though it is artificial intelligence. So let's not, let's not lose the thread, okay? Artificial intelligence is Apple intelligence. There's no difference. It is exactly the same. ChatGPT, that is what this is, all right? Apple intelligence will be a part of Apple's upcoming OS. It's not going to be a separate app. It's not going to be a separate thing. It is going to be intertwined with the operating system. This means that Apple intelligence is going to have access to every single part of your phone. And that explanation and the examples that they gave clearly illustrate that. Because the whole idea is that it is going to tailor the experience specifically for you. So if I was an, an iPhone user or an iOS user, my experience will be different than yours. And the way it's going to do that, for example, is by using the language models to simplify the way you communicate with the phone. It is also going to learn based on your communications and the way you use your phone and how to prioritize messages. So one of the examples that they gave is if you have messages coming up, it is going to kind of bring down the noise by prioritizing the messages of the people that you think is important. It is going to be able to create images based on the pictures that you have on your contacts. So one of the examples that they gave, gave is if you are wishing happy birthday to one of your friends, for example, it can take that picture on your contacts and create an AI image that you can send to your friend. Another thing, of course, that AI can do is take actions for you. You will be able to just tell your AI what you want it to do. For example, if you wanted to pull a file or something that was sent to you, if you want to listen to a podcast that your wife sent you, it's the example that they give. Again, you can 
see how intertwined with what you do in a daily basis this AI is going to be, and how much access is going to have to that information. And because of this reason, of course, privacy is a huge thing. And one of the things that Apple was trying to stress is that all these things that AI is going to be doing is going to be on device. So it's going to be on your phone and it's not going to be sent to the cloud. This is exactly what they said. But it has to be done right. You should not have to hand over all the details of your life to be warehoused and analyzed in someone's AI cloud. AI is going to be constantly in the background waiting for you to say something or ask it to do something in order to be able to do these things quickly. And it's interesting because as you heard on that clip, they said that you shouldn't be sending your information to a cloud and it shouldn't be stored and all this stuff, which I agree 100% with him. But the problem with Apple trying to appease people and trying to uh, talk about privacy is that they go ahead and completely contradict themselves with this next statement. We want to extend the privacy and security of your iPhone into the cloud to unlock even more intelligence for you. So we have created private cloud compute shouldn't so you just finished saying that i shouldn't have to send stuff to the cloud and keep it in the cloud but then you tell me that actually there are things that i'm going to have to send to the cloud which of course logic says i'm going to have to send things to the cloud but this is where apple makes the change they are creating this cloud system that is going to be only accessed when you need to access it so whenever the phone needs to access the cloud it is going to tap into that special cloud not into the regular cloud that keeps your information but this special cloud that supposedly apple doesn't even have access to it is only going to use it for the query that you are trying to solve it isn't going to actually keep that information that you're sending to that cloud in order to protect your privacy it is also not going to keep your your IP address, again, keeping your privacy. Now, if this is all true, if this all pans out the way Apple is saying that it's going to, you got to clap for them because that is the way to do it. Now, Siri isn't going away. Actually, Siri is improving. Siri is evolving into what I'm going to call Siri 2.0. They don't call it Siri 2.0, but that's what I'm going to call it. Now, Siri 2.0 is going to have a new logo. And it's also going to have a new animation. When you call Siri, you're going to have this glowing light on your whole screen when Siri is listening to you. Siri is also going to be able to understand natural speech. So you won't have to worry about using specific words and the thing of being able to understand what you're saying. You'll be able to follow conversational context. And the example I provided is a person going on a trip, I think it was. So if you are going on a trip and asking questions about going on a trip, and then you went back, once you were done with the query, you went back to, let's say, booking tickets for the trip that you have been talking about earlier, Siri will be able to relay the information that you were talking about a trip a few minutes ago, and now you're looking for tickets. So it will go and say, assume that you are, of course, asking for tickets for the trip that you were just talking about, and it will give you the information on how to complete that task. Now, it is going to have the same features that we've seen before in other AIs. It is going to help you change the tone of an email, for example. It will help you rewrite a cover letter or an email. It will proofread documents for you to make sure that within the right tone and they have the, the same grammar. So something like Grammarly. Now, this is supposed to work with every app that allows you to write things because, again, the AI, it is going to be embedded in the OS, and so it's going to have access to everything on your phone. Another thing that we're going to get is Genmoji, which stands for Generative Emoji. And technically what this does is allows you to create an emoji to convey whatever it is that you want to convey. So if you're looking for an emoji that looks like this, but you don't find one, you can tell your phone to create one and then you can send that to your friend or whoever it is you're talking to. Another feature coming using AI is image 
Playground. Image Playground is going to allow you to create your own images, but instead of using contextual format to create it, meaning that instead of typing the type of image that you want to create, it's going to use other images in order to create an image that you want to create. It's going to give you a preview of the image that is creating based on your prompts. And then of course you can keep the image that is creating, you know, create images to your heart's content. Image one is going to allow anyone to become an artist and the way they're going to do that is by using the Apple Pencil. The example that they gave is let's say that you are doing some sort of homework. You have a rough drawing of something. You're going to be able to circle that rough drawing and you're going to also be able to add context to that drawing in order to create an image to replace that rough drawing, making you an artist just like that. Also, if you don't have an image, you can circle the empty space. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the words in the document that you're creating in order to create an image that fits what you're trying to convey. So that means that everyone will be able to cheat their way to artistry. Magic Erase is coming to Apple Photos. With Magic Erase? I mean, clean up. And what this means is that you can circle or paint over people or objects that you want to remove from an image. And AI is going to take care of it by making them disappear. It's something that we've been doing for at least three years on Pixel. And of course, ChatGPT will be integrated within Apple. Yes, ChatGPT 4.0 is actually going to be integrated with Apple from the get-go because uh, Apple is talking about this privacy stuff and everything else. ChatGPT won't be allowed to store any of the information that you're using when using ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT isn't going to be used all the time for everything. It's only going to be used for the things that Siri cannot do for you. So if you ask Siri for a recipe, for example, Siri can't find that recipe, but it can find it on ChatGPT. You will get a prompt letting you know that ChatGPT can complete the task and then you have to say yes if you want to continue. If you don't want to continue using ChatGPT, you can say no. You don't have to have an account to use ChatGPT. You don't have to have a subscription to use ChatGPT. As you can probably tell, I have my reservations about this new Apple AI or Apple Intelligence, which is a ridiculous name. The fact that it's embedded with the OS creates a lot of privacy issues because this thing is constantly going to be going through your phone and like, you know, looking at everything that you have in there. Now, Apple right now, of course, is saying that they are not going to store any of that information. They're not going to take any of that information and use it. But I mean, the reality is that at some point they will. At some point, the company needs to make money. And to me, as I said before, with all AI things, it's like, it's again, like the frog going into the pot and the heat being turned on very, very slowly. Apple is making it very, very safe for you to use their AI. Apple is making it very, very thinking of you before them when they're bringing this AI stuff to you. But if, if we know anything about corporations, it isn't always going to be the case. My fear is that we are offloading all this stuff and giving access to all this stuff to these companies without thinking what is going to happen later on. What is going to happen three, four years from now when you are dependent on this technology and then they can change their terms of service like that, just like everything else that we've done before. So I'm sure it's going to come to Android, right? I mean, it is going to come to Android. It isn't on Android at this level yet, but we don't know what's going to happen in the fall when they talk about the upcoming Pixel device, about the Pixel 9. Pixel 9 most likely will have all this stuff included in it or something like that. And I'll have my thoughts about how they're going to execute on that at that point. But right now, Apple's in the hot seat, so that's who I'm talking about. If, if you think about it, it's something that all these companies have been working on, right? We have Alexa, we have Siri, we have the Google Assistant. We've had all these assistants that, that were pre-AI, right? But it's something that they've been working towards, kind of like letting you get used to using these assistants in order to get you to get used to AI and one day get to where we are today. What do you think about the new announcements from Apple? What do you think about Apple intelligence. Let me know in the comments section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. Thank you very much for watching.